Hello, this is Mr. O'Brien, and this is going to be part one of the lecture notes of, regarding stoichiometry. This is uh, this part one is for both uh, CP and honors classes. Uh, it's section four point C, and um, this information can be found in chapter twelve of your textbook. So let's go ahead and get started about uh, stoichiometry. So prior to learning about stoichiometry, if you recall, we did an activity with nuts and bolts. Uh, I gave you an equation, a recipe, to make a certain type of product with the bolts and nuts. And in that activity, you had to kind of figure out how many products you can make with a given amount of nuts and bolts. Now, as we move on from this ex uh, activity, right, we ended up kind of learning a little bit more about stoichiometry based on this analogy of making grilled cheese sandwiches. And eventually understanding a little bit more that the recipes, right, don't necessarily dictate or tell you the limit of how much product you can make. Given a certain number of reactants, in this case bread or cheeses, you can make a certain number of products of grilled cheese sandwiches. And this idea is called stoichiometry, where we really look at the relationship between the amount of reactants or the amounts of product, oh, let me go back, um, relative to each other. So we're really looking, looking at the amounts, not the amounts on the equation that they tell us, but just the amounts between the reactants and products and its relationship. So if we kind of look at stoichiometry in real life with more of these examples of recipes, consider the one with pancakes, right? Uh, we talked about the Aunt Jemima pancake recipe, which is on the back of this box. And it calls for one cup of mix, three quarter cups of milk, an egg, a tablespoon of oil, and then it all makes about 12 pancakes, okay? And that's okay for, say, this family here, this family three, maybe they're gonna you know, kill these, uh, all pancakes. But what about if you're going to eat pancakes by yourself? Are you going to eat 12 pancakes? Are you going to eat more or less? And if you want the same tasting pancakes and you're going to have a different amount of pancakes, what do you do with the recipe to make the same tasting pancakes as this family is having, um, as opposed to say this individual uh, person is having? How do you change this recipe, manipulate the recipe in a way that you can have the same tasting pancakes, but not making as much or making more. Well, in chemistry, stoichiometry kind of looks like that. Our recipe in, in this example here is, is this one. So nitrogen gas plus three um, sets of hydrogen gas produces two sets of ammonia, as you can see from this uh, drawing and diagram. But what happens if you have, say, two sets of nitrogen gases? and in a limited amount of hydrogen gas, how does the amount of product then change? Or what if you had six sets of hydrogen gases and an unlimited amount of nitrogen gases? How does your amount of product then change? You see, the relationship between the amounts of your reactants, right, and the relationship to the uh, balanced equation really is this idea of stoichiometry. Right? We want to be able to use this balanced chemical equation, right? But in a way, we also want to manipulate it too. We want to not con constrain ourselves to only creating two sets of ammonia. Maybe we want more or maybe we want less. This is the idea of stoichiometry and its relationship to the chemical reaction. So how do we manipulate these recipes of stoichiometry? Well, there's three steps. So the first step is you need to interpret the amount uh, in a balanced chemical equation. Um, now, you might have some skill in this, as you should, based on uh, balancing chemical reactions, but we're just going to recap a couple ways. So at a micro scale, we can interpret this chemical reaction here right, as follows. We have four atoms of iron. As you can see, they're separate entities. Three molecules of uh, oxygen gas, which again, three is from the coefficient and then two compounds of iron three oxide, which again, it came from the coefficient, right? So at a micro scale, at a level that we cannot see. Yet at a macro scale, right? We talk about macro scale, remember from semester one with the moles, we can use those coefficients and those coefficients can now begin to describe moles, moles of stuff, right? In this case, moles of atoms, four moles of iron atoms. In this case, three moles of molecules of oxygen gas. And in this case, two moles of compounds of iron three oxide. 
And remember that moles, right, is related to Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd amount of stuff. So again, recall that in one mole, in each of these little moles, there's this many amount of stuff. And the stuff is either the atoms of iron or the uh, molecules of oxygen or the compounds of iron three uh, oxide. We can also uh, describe and interpret the chemical reaction based on mass, right? So this is a little bit more challenging to see because the coefficients don't tell us the mass, right? But if we know the number of moles of a substance based on the coefficient, right, there's four, and here's four, there's three, and there's three here, and then there's two, and then there's two there. If we know the molar mass of the um, elements at play, and using the molar mass, we can then identify in the most basic chemical reaction how much mass there exists in the products versus the reactants. And again, you should know this based on the law of conservation, right? That um, the reactant side will always equal the product side. Now you might be wondering, well, how do we get 223 grams of iron or 96 grams of oxygen gas or 319 grams of uh, iron three oxide? Well, take a look. Using the molar mass from that periodic square, right, in one mole of iron, you have 55.8 grams. And we multiply that by four, again, because the equation tells us there's four moles if we interpret it as that. If we look at oxygen gas, we have to understand that oxygen gas is O2. It doesn't exist as O. So hence, 32 grams because 16 plus 16. And so we use we multiply by 3 because, again, we identify as 3 moles that exist based on the um, coefficient. And then in the next one for the iron 3 oxide, well, we add the molar mass of iron 3 oxide, 2 irons plus 3 oxygens, gives us about 160 grams. And we multiply that amount by two because, again, the equation tells us there's two sets of them, right? Two moles. And altogether, right, we have 223 grams of iron plus 96 grams of oxygen equals, essentially, 319 grams of iron three oxide. Now, try that practice, right? Understanding, interpreting based on particles, moles, and mass in this, these problems. And if you have a hard time with this, hit me up at tutorial. In step two of manipulating stoichiometry recipes, right, we need to identify ratios. And ratios, remember, if you, know, if, you, if you know something about ratios, they just identify two different things, uh, items, right? And those things could be, uh, this could be um, say, the amount of boys versus uh, girls in a class, right? Or maybe the amount of people that play sports versus people that uh, don't play sports, right? Um, the, a ratio is just identifying two different things, right? And the ratios, the numbers of the ratios could be the same or could be different. It just depends on what the sample size is. So in the same equation, right, we can identify the ratio. So if we interpret this equation as moles, where are these ratios coming from? Well, we can identify the ratio of the amount of iron uh, reactant, right, to the amount of iron three oxides that it produces. The ratio is for every four moles of iron atoms, I will produce two moles of iron three oxide. Or if I can flip it around, for every two moles of iron three oxide I need to make, I will have to have four moles of iron atoms. So there's a ratio right there. And then another ratio. What about the moles of oxygen gas? molecules to the moles of iron three oxide which they can make. And then there's another ratio comparing the amounts of reactants to each other. For every four moles of iron atoms, I'm going to need three moles of oxygen molecules and vice versa. So on all together, you're going to have, in this case here, you'll have six uh, ratios that you can use. Okay. So take a look at this example and see if you can uh, try this example out and identify all the possible ratios that exist in this equation. Um, if you have a hard time, give me a, hit me up at tutorial and I can help you out. The last step of doing stoichiometry, basic stoichiometry problems, right, is to now use your given and apply it to the mole ratio that we just uncovered in the chemical reaction. 
for you guys, uh, for those students who like um, having equations, uh, you can kind of consider this as an equation or a formula if you want. You know, the moles of your, the given moles of your question multiplied by the mole ratio will give you essentially an answer, which is a stoichiometry answer. Let me show you how this works. So here's the same ex uh, equation that we talked about. Okay? And if we interpret again this as moles, right? We know that four moles of iron atoms plus three moles of oxygen molecules will produce two moles of iron three oxide. So we got that down. But notice that the question is telling us, no, 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 no. You have two moles of iron. How much iron three oxide are you going to make? That's the question now. So notice how the recipe has now changed, right? The, it, well, in a way, it doesn't change, but what does change is the amount that you start off with. We start off with less, if you recognize that. So how do we know how much product do we get? Well, for some of you guys, you might see the relationship, right? The relationship essentially is the amount of iron atoms to the amount of product that you get. And if you see this ratio, for every four, you make two. So if you have two moles of iron, you're going to make less amount of iron three oxide. So if you, can, if you know already what the answer is, keep that in the back of your head. Let me show you what your brain does um, if you just did this answer in your head. So two moles times two moles of iron, of iron three oxide over four moles of iron atoms. Now the ratio we use two over four because notice in math we want to multiply two times two and then we ended up dividing it by four. And if we divide the top and the bottom, notice that the moles of iron atoms cancel out and we're left with what we want, which is iron three oxide. And so when we do that, we get one mole of iron three oxide. Hopefully that's what you predicted, right? And you can kind of see it that way. We, we started off with half of the amount that's expected. So we should proportionally take away half here as well, as you notice. Okay. Well, let's try this again. Well, what if you're given six moles of oxygen gas and you want to know how much iron you actually need as well? Well, in this example, we use a different ratio. We use a ratio of iron atoms to oxygen mo uh, molecules. And the ratio here is four to three. But notice that you start off with six moles of oxygen, not three. You start off with more. And so you should recognize that your answer is going to be higher than four. Well, hopefully you got a prediction now, right? But how do we apply this based on our little formula above? Well, if we identify the ratio, four moles of iron over three moles of oxygen gas, we end up finding that we have eight moles of iron that we make. Six times four, divide that by three. Now, why is it not three over four? Well, because again, remember, you want to cancel out the oxygen uh, moles so that you're just left with moles of iron. If you did three over four, the three over four would look something like this, and this would not be able to cancel out your um, moles of oxygen. So this, this wouldn't work, that ratio. It has to be four over three. So try that skill out here with these questions, right? And if you have a hard time with them, hit me up a tutorial so we can work them together. And here's another one. This is a little bit more challenging. Try this one as well. It's another practice problem for your stoichiometry. Now, stoichiometry problems can also be disguised, right? Those are simple mole problems. But how do we disguise these problems? We can disguise them as mass type problems. Like take a look at this example, how this one's different. It's telling you, wait a minute, you have 112 grams of iron, right? React with an unlimited amount of oxygen. And you might be wondering, well, that's kind of hard to understand because I can see this as four moles, three moles, and two moles, right? But what is 112 grams? Well, if you don't know that yet, what you should do is you should convert that 112 grams of iron into moles. When you convert that 112 grams into moles, you find out that you get two moles. Now, again, remember this is the molar mass, right? If, uh, if you need help with this, come hit me up a tutorial. We can talk more about converting. But now that you can see it's two moles, it's your starting point. Notice that we need to use the ratio of iron to iron three oxide. 
and we need to use ratio of four to two. But if we start off with two moles of iron, less than the reaction tells us, we should get less product, right? And so if we do stoichiometry, just like we just did in the previous slide, we use ratio of four of two, but in this case, we have to use two over four because we want to cancel out the moles of iron. We'll find out that we have one mole of iron three oxide. Now, notice that the question is asking us for mass of iron three oxide, so we actually have to do one more step, right? And that one more step is just a simple conversion, right? We use molar mass in this case now, the molar mass of iron three oxide, and so hence one mole of iron uh, of iron three oxide times it by one sixty divided by one will get you one hundred sixty grams of iron three oxide. Now, is there a way to do this a little bit faster, a little bit quicker, less steps? And there is. I call it a challenging way, right? And not, not saying that you can't do this. It's just a little, bit more, a little bit more challenging because we have to now, instead of interpreting this by moles, you have to be able to interpret this by mass. And if you interpret these by mass because the question is giving you mass, you can do all of, the, all of this in one step. Let me show you. Well, we know that the chemical equation tells us that four moles of iron, right? We got four moles of iron, uh, is also related to two moles of iron three oxide. But these four moles also relates to 223 grams of iron, which also relates to 320 grams of iron three oxide. We can use that ratio in our problem by identifying a given using the correct a ratio, which is 320 over 20, 223, because again, we want to cancel out the irons. And you'll get the answer as 160 grams of iron 3 oxide. Again, this is a, a little bit more of a challenging way because it, you have to be able to interpret these based on mass. And so hence, you get a one-step problem as opposed to a three-step problem, right? But the nice thing about a three-step problem is it breaks it up into manageable chunks, right? First you convert, then you do stoichiometry, and then you convert again. So you can choose how you wish to, to approach these questions. Here's another way that stoichiometry problems are disguised. They're disguised based on particle problems. If you take a look at this example here, um, the same equation, but this time they're telling you you have 1.24 mo uh, atoms of iron. And it wants to know how many oxygen molecules you'll need. So it might be a little bit more challenging here because you really don't know, maybe you don't know, what 1.2 times 10 to the 24th means. So we got to, number one, interpret it by moles, right? So if we divide this, remember that one mole is equal to Avogadro's number. We can cancel this out and we identify we have two moles of iron. Well, now that you have two moles of iron, it becomes a little easier, right? You can see that the ratio is 4 to 3. We don't need this guy anymore. And for every four, you need three oxygen moles. But notice that you have two moles starting off with, so your answer of oxygen should be much less than three. If we use stoichiometry and use that mole ratio appropriately, three over four, we cancel out the moles of iron. Two times three div divided by four gets you one and a half moles of oxygen gas. And if you multiply that by its uh, Avogadro's number, you'll get the number of molecules present in that amount of oxygen gas, right? So it's just a conversion problem. Now, could you do this all in one step as well? Yes, you can, right? By using that particle ratio. But if you interpret this by particles instead, then you can, you can do this all in one step. Now, how do you do that? Well, remember that I don't call this four, I, can't, I can call this four atoms of iron, and I can call this three molecules of oxygen producing two compounds of iron three oxide. And since I'm only looking at iron and oxygen, well, my ratio is four atoms to three molecules. If I apply this ratio to the problem, this all becomes one step. Four atoms, three molecules of oxygen, and so ultimately, one 0.2 times 10 to the 24 times by 3 divided by 4 will get you 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay? Now, 
Um, you don't have to do it the challenging way. Again, sometimes it's nice to do it the three-step way because you can break it up into small chunks, right? But if you're ready and if you're identifying these bad particles, then you can. Let's recap real quick. So, so essentially, you can break down stoichiometry using mole ratios. Okay, mole ratio is the easiest way to do this. And you can convert from one substance to another, right? Or if you want, you can skip all these conversions and then just you use a mass ratio if you're going from grams to grams or a particle ratio if you're going from particles to particles, okay? I have two problems here I want you to try out. Um, if you have it regarding the um, uh, stoichiometry with mass, uh, try them out. If you have any hard times with them, hit me up at tutorial. Thanks.